Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or if it's your very first time here, welcome on in. I am back, of course, with another monthly plan with me. Uh, I'd be lying if I said that this theme is not inspired by the copious amounts of gothic romance novels that I've been reading over the past few months, uh, most notably Nauticadia, which was my favorite book of January, Gothicana, <laughs> or Gothicana, I'm not too sure exactly how you pronounce it. Um, which is looking to be my favorite book of February, as well as the Nightshade duology, um, what else? Salt and Broom, which was the very first book that I read in January. Just a lot. There's been a lot of gothic romance, so this theme just felt right. I've been really inspired, and I think that's one of the reasons why I love being both an avid reader and an avid bullet journaler, is that I feel so incredibly inspired by the books I read every so often, uh, and I love just translating that into my journals. So that is essentially the theme for March. So this month's setup actually took a little bit longer than I was expecting, and that's mainly because of this page. Uh, I knew that I wanted to do some kind of moth cage as the main focal point for my cover page this time. Uh, but I had quickly realized that I was not really liking how it was looking once I finished the structure of the cage. I just felt like I chose one too many small moth stickers, so I ended up scrapping all of the ones at the top portion of the cage and replacing it with a much larger moth sticker, and I just really love how that looks. Uh, so I'm glad I made the change. I was debating on cutting this entire portion out just because, to be honest, this does make the video a lot longer than it needed to be, but I also kind of enjoy showing you the entire process, especially when it comes to very intricate designs like this, because in reality this did take me a really long time, and I wasn't happy with the result, and a part of me just kind of wanted to just roll with what I had created because I knew that I was already pretty behind on the filming schedule with this uh, video. But in the end, it all came around. I really love how it ends up looking. Uh, it just took a little bit longer to get there than I initially thought. I also think that a reason why I was able to really fiddle with this page until I got it as perfect as I would have wanted is because of this roll-on tape that I use. I, This is basically the only roll-on tape <laughs> that I use. It is from AdTech, not sponsored. It's just a really great tape. Um, it is sticky enough to where like things don't move on the page, but it's also like flexible. <laughs> is that the right word? Like flexible enough to where I can move things around and it not completely destroy the paper that it's being adhered to, um, or that also can just be because I'm doing it within a certain amount of time and maybe I wouldn't be able to really mess with it too much if this cage was sitting there for hours on end. But nonetheless, it really made the whole process a lot easier. However, this isn't the last adjustment that I decide to make because once I put all the pieces of the cage back together, I started to feel like it wasn't really popping off the page as much as I would have liked. So I did the next best thing and just totally just cut it out of the journal. And I know that there was a definitely easier way to do this because I have individual pieces of black paper that I could have just like created the cage on instead of doing it in my actual bullet journal. But I also had no plan. I had no idea it was going to turn out this way or that I would have wanted to change my initial idea. So I unfortunately had to tear this page out and just pray that I didn't destroy the binding of my journal, which I didn't. So that's great. Shout out to Scribbles That Matter for making high quality notebooks that don't get messed up when the user decides to tear a page out of the book. <laughs> Before doing the whole reconstruction surgery for this page, I decided just to give the cage a little bit more of like an ornate detail so it wasn't this like plain craft paper cage. 
as most moth cages are. <laughs> uh, so I just went in with my Holy Grail pen, the Rytek Upgel, and just drew in these like leafy designs. But I feel like it makes the cage look a lot better. So I completely forgot that I decided to add this extra bit of detail to the moth cage and I think at this point I was just trying to find a way to salvage this idea because I was again realizing that it wasn't looking as good as I thought it was going to on the black paper. So I decided to add this like mixed media element to the cage almost as if like this cage is being gifted to somebody. So I just went in with my X-Acto knife to poke a hole at the portion of the page right above the cage itself. Uh, grabbed this leftover twine that I had for my wedding invitations, as well as this very convenient butterfly tag that I got from this little ephemera set from Paper World Shop, which was actually featured in my stationery haul video, if you have not seen that. I will make sure to link it down below and up here. Here. <laughs> I'm pointing to the sky as if you can see what I'm actually doing, but I, I will make sure to link it. <laughs> so essentially this little addition to the cage was a perfect way for me to title the setup, of course with the month of March. I had to redo it a few times because I wasn't a fan of how the Tombow Fudo Nosuke brush was performing on this kind of textured paper. Uh, it started feathering out pretty bad and looked pretty messy, so I just grabbed a scrap piece of black paper, covered it up, and it's like you never knew it was there. <laughs> Alrighty, so now for the fun part of trying to cut this cage out of my journal. Uh, it was a little bit difficult because there's a lot of intricate corners uh, on this design, so it, it took me a little bit longer and I just found it a lot easier to first just tear out the page itself and then proceed to finish cutting out the cage. I was already really starting to like this a lot better even though not much changed at all, but I quickly realized that using the book pages would be a perfect backdrop for this cage. So I was just really excited. I finally saw the light at the very, very dark tunnel. Um, and I just really wanted to get this done. So yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out.
Alrighty, we've reached the end of the plan with me. <laughs> oh, just that page took forever to get done, but honestly, I'm so glad I committed to the change. It just looks so much better. I feel like the cage just really pops against the book pages. I love it. <laughs> but of course, we still have plenty of setting up to do for this month because it is going to be quite a busy one. So starting off strong with the quote page, uh, which I sometimes do, sometimes don't over the past, well, it's only been three months <laughs> of 2024, but I've done a quote page every month so far and I've really been enjoying it. So a huge part of the planning process when it comes to setting up my bullet journal themes is of course finding the inspiration. In this case, yes, it does have a lot to do with the kinds of books that I've been reading, but I also enjoy perusing Pinterest for pictures and quotes. And honestly, it is a lot of fun because I feel like I get to find quotes that I would have never probably seen if I had it been searching for a moth aesthetic. Anytime I try to look for images to use, I always type in like the theme followed by the word aesthetic. I don't know. I feel like I just get the most relevant searches and it's like a perfect mix of like the actual theme plus any other photos or quotes that fit the same vibe. Does that make any sense? <laughs> I don't know. I just over the past five years of bullet journaling, I just find that to be the most effective way to find the necessary bits for setting up my bullet journals. So naturally the quote I chose for this month is a moth among butterflies. Really simple and straight to the point, but honestly over the past few days of constantly seeing this quote and using it in my captions for the reels that i'm making about this setup i don't know i'm really starting to resonate with this quote a lot more than i initially did at first i just wanted to use it because it fit the theme and it was short enough for a quote page but i honestly just find it really reflective of my personal growth as an artist and as a bullet journaler, I suppose. I feel like when I started journaling, uh, my spreads were very simple, devoid of color, <laughs> not very much to them, which I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I think my mindset at that time was I was just trying to make spreads that a lot of other people were making in the same kind of art style. And I quickly realized that I wasn't having any fun doing that. So I changed it up and I was a little bit scared of how it was gonna be received because I wasn't really seeing many people doing it this way. And of course, as time went on, I just became a lot more comfortable with bullet journaling in this very kind of cozy, chaotic collage. Oh, that's a nice... That's a nice way to describe it. I like that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just became a lot more comfortable with journaling this way. And I honestly feel like a moth among butterflies sometimes. So yeah, I I'm glad I managed to find this quote that would have had no meaning until this very moment. Alrighty, finally finished the first spread of this setup. It only took 
two hours for me to do and 15 minutes for you to watch. So I hope you enjoyed the first third of this video, but now we are going to be moving on to the habit tracker, which won't actually be a habit tracker for a while because I decide to make this kind of cheeky little divider. Although to be honest, it was pretty much just an excuse to use more of these stunning gigantic moth stickers. The moth washi tape as well as all the moth stickers are from Paper Haunt. I actually featured their shop in my stationery haul video, but I will make sure to link their Etsy in the description down below. This divider was infinitely harder to cut out because of the very intricate corners and lines due to the butterflies. I kind of just set myself up for failure, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, I still really love how it turned out. It just, it took forever. And I didn't, I didn't really trust the X-Acto knife to cut cleanly. So after I kind of just cut the bulk away with the X-Acto knife, I went in with my scissors just to do the finer cuts. And I think it looks really good. What ended up happening, however, is because this page went through so much abuse, <laughs> uh, it started to slowly separate from the notebook, so I eventually went in with washi tape just to secure both sides of the page in order to prevent it from separating even more. I also felt like throughout this setup, I was kind of all over the place when it came to creating the pages. Like for some reason, I kept going from right to left instead of like the usual left to right. I, I don't know. I think I was, I knew that I wanted to do this divider. So I, I did that first and then I knew that I wanted to do the habit tracker behind it. But I also knew that I wanted to have the to-do list before all of that. So I, I was just totally scatterbrained, but I was having such a fun time. I really loved how this setup turned out. And honestly, I think another reason, which I'm gonna continue doing, I started doing it for my February bullet journal setup, is just having the necessary supplies for said setup at my disposal while I'm filming. Which obviously that sounds like the most logical thing to do, but I'm pretty sure Throughout most of last year's setups, I would have like a few things ready to go, but not everything. So if there were stamps I wanted to use or washi tapes, I would actually go and look for them while I was filming, which would elongate the process so much more. Uh, I think it was mainly because I was relatively new to filming the entirety of my monthly setups because if i'm not filming i'm taking my time i'm getting up and grabbing things i'm not really there's not really much preparation so i think i just needed to get used to the mindset of okay what is the fastest way i can film these videos and have my setups done in a timely manner so what I started doing for last month's setup and this month's is going through all of my stationery, looking at the stickers, the stamps, the washi tape, markers, pens, paper ephemera, literally my entire stationery collection, and just choosing anything that I thought would fit the theme for the month. And it's just, I don't know, I felt like I enjoy the filming process so much more because I feel like I'm using all the stationery that I want to use. Uh, I also find this process a lot easier as well because my stationery collection is quickly expanding and because of that I totally forgot that I had this dark purple washi tape that was perfect to use for this spread. Uh, it's hard to tell because I do put a filter on my videos but it's the washi tape that I used to secure <laughs> that divider um, and it just worked out perfect tangent in a nutshell <laughs> is basically that the more I film and journal the better ways I will find to save time even if you know those ways are obvious to most people <laughs>
Alrighty, so I am just finishing up the habit tracker page for this month's setup with the same purple washi tape that I used earlier. Uh, I end up filming the completion of the back of the divider off camera because I just, I had no idea if I wanted to make it functional or decorative. Spoiler alert, I went with decorative because it was just easiest and I couldn't really think of anything that would fit in the very awkwardly shaped space. Okay, so of course, because those two spreads took quite a bit of time, uh, it naturally took me two days to complete my March bullet journal setup. So we are now on day two with completely different lighting because the sun decided to make an appearance on this day. And as you know, I use all natural lighting for my videos. So apologies, hopefully the weird shifting in sun isn't too distracting while we finish up the rest of this month's setup. Alrighty, so much like for the cover page for this month, I decided to do something a little bit similar for my mood tracker. So I just drew out half of a moth wing on a piece of black paper, uh, cut it out, and then pasted it on top of this collage of book pages. And then on the inside of the wing, I drew a bunch of like squiggly squares and circles to kind of resemble the pattern of a moth slash butterfly. And I really love how it turned out.
Next, I'm just finishing off the mood tracker by going back in with these mood stickers from Paper Haunt. As you can see, I specifically avoided the pink stickers mainly because they just didn't fit the overall color palette for this month, but I hope to use them for a spread in the future. Another pen that I used quite a bit for this month's setup is the Zig Clean Color Dot in the shade Gold. I just have so much fun stamping with this pen. It's just super easy to create like confetti dots everywhere. And as you will see later on at the end of this setup, I really loved using gold as a key accent color for these pages. Okay, moving on to the next page in this month's setup. This will be my March favorites, the monthly favorites as per usual. I really love doing these spreads mainly because they are not only really fun to fill in throughout the month, but it's also just a more simplified page that I can get done during this setup and it not take too much time because I really enjoy taking my time with like the habit, mood trackers, cover pages, stuff like that. So it's just nice to kind of have a page that doesn't require too much preparation or design. Alrighty friends, we are in the home stretch for my March bullet journal setup. This is the last set of pages. The first one starting off strong with once again another quote page. This is a quote that I found of course while doing my inspirational research on Pinterest and I just really loved it. Again, I don't think I would have ever found this quote if not for said research and I just felt it was beautiful enough that it deserved its own page. So this quote I found from Amanda Selick, uh, Kellick, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce their last name, but it says, some women are more moth than butterfly, unveiling their painted wings in the moonlight where only someone who isn't afraid to enter the darkness is worthy to adore them. Now, if that doesn't scream gothic romance novels, then I don't really know what does.
Okay, so with the second quilt page all finished, I am now moving on to the final page of my March bullet journal setup. This one I knew I wanted to create because it is a very momentous occasion for both myself and my small business, and it takes place at the end of March. So I am finally participating in my very first in-person market on March 30th in Huntington Beach, California. So if you are local to the Southern California area, I would love to see you there. Uh, I will be selling sticker sheets, die cut stickers, washi tapes, probably some journal ephemera kits. I haven't exactly decided the exact inventory for this market. I am both very nervous and very excited to be doing something like this. The market is from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. I will leave all the information for it in the description down below in case you are interested. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I just knew that I had to do some kind of page dedicated to this very special event that is happening for my shop. Again, it was one of my goals for this year and I hope to do a few more throughout 2024, but I will make sure to let you know. If you're interested at all in seeing more of the prep and behind the scenes process of me preparing for this market, make sure to check out my Patreon because I will be updating them quite a bit uh, throughout the next month and probably doing a dedicated vlog over on there as well. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier in this video about gold being a key accent color for this month's setup, I decided to dust off my wax seal stamping kit along with purchasing this stunning moth stamp from Amazon just to add a little bit of extra detail. To be honest, third time was definitely the charm. Uh, this first stamp did not turn out so great, but that was probably because of the twine. And then the stamp on the quote page was just, it ended up being so thick on the bottom, but I think that's because I was just trying to prevent the wax from overlapping the quote. And the third time I think turned out okay, but it was definitely the best out of the three. And then I just went in with this black marker from Archer and Olive to just make it easier to see the moth detail. Alrighty friends, it is time for the final flip through of my March bullet journal setup inspired by all things moth, <laughs> gothic romance, uh, dark academia, all the things. I really hope you enjoyed watching me set up these pages and I hope I was able to provide a little bit of inspiration for your future bullet journal setups. As always, if you would like to see any more of my creations, feel free to check out my Instagram, TikTok, threads, or any of my previous videos. I do have an entire playlist dedicated to my 2023 plan with me's, so make sure to check that out if you are interested. Also, I would love to know if there are any gothic romance novels out there that you recommend because I am always in the market to read more of those. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.